Welcome to the World News, your daily dose of international news around the globe. I'm Randall Jamias here in Ibiza. We start the news with an accident. A train collided with an articulated lorry in southern Italy on Monday, killing the driver and injuring the passengers. The high-speed fresh Argento train from Rome to Lecce hit a lorry that had stopped on the tracks at a level crossing in Sisterino, located on the hill of the Italian boot at about 11.35 GMT. According to a spokesman for the Italian railway, the crossing gate was down at the moment of impact. There were no official numbers for the number of people hurt by the accident. Meanwhile, forest fires are raging in some parts of Spain. Over 2,000 people were evacuated as forest fires swept through areas of Valencia on Monday. The fire has affected six municipalities in the area of Los Serranos and has a front of between 10 and 11 kilometers. Over 600 firefighters and 31 air personnel were working to extinguish the blaze in different locations of the region. Evacuates include residents of the towns of Chulilia, Gestalgar, as well as parts of Pedralba and Bugara. They said it was more prudent to evacuate their house. Three centers have been set up to assist evacuees. Authorities said the cause of the fire was being investigated. In other news, China has completed cataloging of ancient Buddhist scriptures with a history of more than 2,000 years. This is the result of years of efforts to collect and photocopy the precious pages in Tibetan autonomous region. Another step to uncover more about the origins of Buddhism, the patch of leaf scriptures record classical works in Sanskrit, including literature, law, and algorithms in ancient Buddhist culture. This over 1,000 pieces large volume is a big event for researchers of Buddhist culture. The origin of the Buddhism lies in the lines of the scripture. It is truly significant for South Asian countries in finding out more information. Tibet has the largest collection of the scriptures. Its dry geological conditions and culture helped locals to preserve them well. China initiated the project six years ago in a bid to rescue and preserve the pieces scattered in the region over the past thousands of years. Nearly 60,000 were collected. It's also significant for us to know the history of cultural exchanges between China and South Asian countries, including Nepal and India. Buddhists in South Asian countries favored the patra leaves for their light and water-resistant qualities, inscribing on them with stencil pens. Originated from India, the scriptures were introduced to southeastern China's Yunnan province and Tibet Autonomous Region during religious exchanges. It formed the foundation of Buddhism and is hoped to add more pages to China's rich civilization. Between CCTV. Another news in China, the 9th China ASEAN Expo began last week in Nanning, China. Many Chinese companies are seeking new investment opportunities at the fair. Favorable policies in the free trade zone are pushing more Chinese enterprises to enter the ASEAN market. Here's more. Zhang Lianzun runs a textile company in Anhui province. He said that his business has been severely affected by the soaring prices of raw materials and labor costs. He is seeking investment opportunities in ASEAN countries at the Expo. After visiting several exhibition halls, he has shown great interest in the Vietnam Longjiang Industry Park. In Vietnam, the labor cost of is 800 yuan per month, but in my company, that comes to between 2,000 and 2,600. This is a huge cost margin, and the electricity in Vietnam also costs much less than in my company. Zhang Liming, the leasing manager of the Vietnam Longjiang Industrial Park, introduced their favorable tax policies. In our industrial park, the business income tax is waived for the first four years. For the next nine years, it's 5 percent, and for the next 10 years, it's 10 percent. If the products are for export, the raw material import will be free of taxes for five years and the export tax and the value-added tax are also waived. Zhang Liming said a lot of entrepreneurs like Zhang Lianzun have come to their booths for consultation since the expo opened. Many light industrial manufacturing enterprises talk to us at the expo 
these kind of enterprises have been affected by the anti-dumping policies of America and Europe. Their products cannot be exported, so they are now seeking a new investment base in the overseas market. At present, among the ASEAN countries, six countries have a zero tax policy for over 90% of Chinese products. The other four countries will also have this zero tax policy before 2015. The favorable policies are encouraging more Chinese companies to invest in the ASEAN market. Let's head to the Southeast Asia. The Philippines' beloved Jeepney got a facelift at the month-long Jeepney Arts Festival that ended Monday, paying homage to the country's most popular mode of public transport. Recently, about 150 artists joined a Jeepney painting competition to rehabilitate old Jeepney units and revive the tradition of bedecking the minibuses in flamboyant colors. Given the freedom to interpret the tourism slogan, It's More Fun in the Philippines, artists used stainless steel jeeps as canvas to promote the country's famous attractions such as religious festivals, the whale shark, and the Mayon volcano. The painting contest culminated in a parade of the 50 newly decorated jeepneys from the seaside Rojas Boulevard to Manila's business district of Makati on Monday. From a mere uh, product of World War II, we transformed it into a passenger jeepneys. That's where the um, uh, resiliency and entrepreneurship of the Filipino people came about until suddenly it became so popular because they already uh, put some uh, colorful ornaments, they started painting it. The quality of the artwork on it was not as good as before when I was younger. So when this event came to be, um, I decided to join because it was an opportunity for us to paint on the jeep and actually improve the quality of art. And speaking of art, an exhibition is happening in Australia, but it's catering for a special audience. An art installation in Sydney is putting the importance of light for the visually impaired under the spotlight. The pop-up exhibition called Sea Braille opened last week, showcasing 16 exhibits about light and blindness. It displays panels with anecdotes written in Braille and backlit for the benefit of visually impaired people who have a degree of light perception. One LED is used to light each Braille dot, and the visually impaired can use the light to locate the Braille and read it with their fingers or even visually read the signs if they have the good light perception. The exhibition also runs an audio track with students from the Royal Institute of Deaf and Blind Children talking about the importance of light. So obviously I've got my guide dog, Ali, and she helps with, you know, moving me around all the big things and making sure I don't sort of come to harm. But an exhibition like this is fantastic because it's, I suppose, lighting up Braille for me, moving through, I can actually see it. Uh, and definitely applied to things like signage, it means that I'm able to move through an environment and actually pick things up using that light and help to navigate myself around. I met a lady who was blind and she talked often about light and for me it was a, a, a contradiction until I researched and found out that 90% of people who are blind see light. Uh, and so I decided to create an exhibition uh, that would communicate this to people, the importance of light for people who are blind. More news in the art field, this time in France. An exhibition on the intersections between Impressionism and the world of fashion opens this week at Paris Orsay Museum, mixing painted masterpieces with representative examples of cinch waistlines and hop skirts. Guy Codjeval, the president of Orsay Museum, said that the Lady of Paris is someone who appears as a kind of iconic, totemic image who carries the phenomenon of fashion with her and who emerges in the second half of the 19th century, so the Impressionists were there to bear witness. Robert Carson, the artistic director, said in a lot of pieces, the characters aren't looking at the painter. There is something very close to photography, where this moment is captured, this moment of movement. They eliminate all the, all of the finicky details of the essential. And what is the essential? The way they're turning. 
the way he sat like that, as if it was a moment. As Baudelaire said, you know, everything that's transitive and fugitive that, that moves, that's modern life. Thanks for the company. All news will be right back. Please stay with us.